Hello, and welcome to Zim Explore. I am Dr. Abstract. And in this Zim Explore, we're going to look at Flexercise. So that's right, Flexercise. It's a, a little app that we can use to exercise. Shall we have a look? Um, what we are going to do is press the start button here and you'll hear instructions to exercise. You hit the start button. Leg kicks, arm swings, neck circles, hmm. squats, squats. Right. So each squats. one is taking five seconds. Leg and back stretches. And as you can see on the right hand side. Dancing. Yeah. Challenge. Cha cha. Psychedelic dance. Stretches the right hand side there. <laughs> uh, we've got the guy is reducing there. And then we can hit the pause, and that pauses it all. No reducing, no sounds. Unpause, and it carries on. There's the pause, pausing all the sounds. Round dancing. Yeah. And when it's done, the body replenishes and we're all ready to go. Now, there are sliders here, so the sliders can be set like that. And as we set the slider, the total time, which that's a tip on there, the total time tip, uh, total time goes up. So if we go to 40, if we move this one up to 15, it goes up by 10. Well, you know what I mean. Uh, well, let's see, I think that's good. And you can also press on these things and make these things go up and down. That's a stepper that's in there. It goes sideways here or type in a number. And that's a slider. So what we've got here is a list that we can't drag up and down because it's full in the box. And the list has these special entries that you can do, elements that you can do. This is the slider element that comes with a slider and a matching number stepper. It was introduced a few versions of Zim ago, small versions of this, or medium versions, I guess we'll call it. So the start button will start playing, and we've got a gradient sitting up here, some, some characters, and some custom font. So what this was primarily built for, well, aside from me to exercise, <laughs> um, was to show polish various things like the curves of a button, the gradient, custom fonts, and a few other things uh, that we're doing throughout. So let's go into this code, and we'll take you through the code in this Zim Explorer. Does that sound like fun? Yeah, right. So Zim Exercise is what it's called here. We're bringing in CreateJS123 and Zim1070. We're also bringing in the game module. That gives us uh, probably this thing here. That, that it's a timer. And I think that's probably it. So it just gives us a timer. We could have made that with a text field, but the timer has a few, a few treats that make it easier to deal with. We're using an audio sprite. So all of those instructions, voice instructions, were recorded in one recording here with the screen capture software. I threw it into Adobe Edition or any audio software, even Adobe Premiere or video software, and then cut out the spaces, took the ones I want, and then found out when the sound started. So the kicking part started at zero and went to 462. There's a little bit of a space in there, uh, so the squat started at 4.72. Usually these numbers can match the start and ends, and you just try and cut it right in the middle. But then uh, in a couple cases, they either cut off too early or didn't start quite on time with my, my numbering system, so I just slightly adjusted some numbers in here, not all of them. For instance, that one didn't need any adjusting. Neither did this one going to that one. So it's just a few of them. Anyway, this is the format for a Zim audio sprite. We say the source of the audio, and then it has audio sprite data inside of the square brackets here. 
and that's an array of arrays with this information. There's a few other formats for audio sprites. You can use tools out there to make audio sprites, and we allow that format to be brought in as well. So have a look at the audio sprite information in the docs, or indeed, I think in the frame in load assets, we mentioned some audio sprite work there. The other assets are here, or this is our assets array, and we're passing in the audio sprite data as one of them. We also have a custom font called squared. Oops, <laughs> still not used to add them. Usually in my previous editors, I could click on something that's selected. Well, it worked there. I could click on something that's selected, and the selection would go away, and add them. It doesn't always happen. Well, it did. <laughs> did, as I, did as I tried to demonstrate it. I don't know what the difference was. Anyway, um, there's our custom font squared. This is locally stored as squared.ttf, and all of these things would be in the assets folder. We're passing them into Zim here, assets and path, uh, along with uh, a progress bar. The progress bar has a custom foreground color that matches the rest of the app. So don't just leave a progress bar in there like it's orange and nothing in your app is orange, unless you really want to. It's easy enough to change those. Same with the waiter. If you put a waiter in here, customize the waiter how you like. This is a, a circle. We've scaled that circle up by four. That also makes it a bit unique. So now it's this big loading circle because sometimes it takes a while to load in these sounds. We've got a, a couple bigger sounds here. You know, that might be three megabytes or something like that for playing a song as I'm uh, doing the exercises. I might have wanted to bring in a background audio that would just play throughout, and then when the dancing parts come in, then the dancing comes It seems perhaps slightly odd to have no sounds at all, and then all of a sudden I have dancing sounds. So for consistency, uh, this is what I found quite often. If you've got sounds in your app, often then you'll want a background sound. Otherwise, it just seems a bit odd that you know there's no sound at all, and then you explode something and you get an explosion sound. Probably would be best to have uh, sound going all the time, and then when you explode something, you get an explosion over top of the backing sound. Uh, it may be the same in the app here. On the other hand, it is an exercise app. Uh, I'm doing leg kicks and sit-ups. I'm not sure if if I want sound through those, just a general background sound. And many people exercise with sound, so perhaps I should have tried. Anyway, I uh, can certainly <laughs> play with that as we go. It's neither here nor there. Now, the audio sprite, why don't we try commenting out all this stuff? Oh, there's not too much stuff in here that we need to look through, huh? And here I am talking about uh, sounds at exercise, huh? So I'll comment out all that stuff. And we'll bring in the preview audio sprite. So preview audio sprite, I think, is in the meta, in meta documentations of Zim. And you pass in the audio sprite data and also how many letters you want to use in this. So we'll right click here and open in browser. So what the preview audio sprite does is it gives you your audio sprites just up in a tab and I can press any of them. Leg and back stretches. Floor stretches and cool dancing. So you get the idea, you're, uh, it just tests your various sounds there, so that's a handy little thing that you can use. All right, well, we'll undo, bring all that stuff back, good, and let's uh, start looking in. Uh, Later on, we have a blend mode that is happening. The assets for, see if I can find them, the assets for, uh, what was it called, uh, that, that guy, and where am I? I'm in exercise. So go to exercise. Here's assets. The bodies looks like look like this, and the body looks like that. So that's a white picture, a white background and a black picture. I have a gray background on, on the app. So here's the app right here. And I'm not sure what happened there. Did I save that? I didn't save it. Okay, so here's the app right here. 
here's the uh, the guy now he doesn't have a white background so we needed to apply a blend mode on that to get rid of the white background and leave the the uh, the black silhouette there or we could have gone in here this is just from the internet we could have gone in here and selected the background and tried to you know cut it out in Photoshop or something like that make it background transparent but uh, the blend mode saved us some time there neat huh all right, so let's go take a look at the blend mode then. For a blend mode to work, you cannot blend mode against an empty color stage, or even if the stage has a color. When, when we give the stage a color up here, this one, that is actually setting the color of the canvas tag in behind. Stage, there's nothing on the stage. There's nothing to click on the stage. The stage is sort of like invisible. So that leads to a couple uh, issues that we have to remember. One is we can't do something like a mouse down on the stage. It would have that mouse down would capture a mouse down. If there's something on the stage, it would then capture that mouse down. If you're clicking a mouse down or pressing mouse down on that something, if you press on the stage where there isn't something, you don't get a mouse down. However, there is a stage mouse down event that you can use to capture uh, a mouse down anywhere on the stage even if there's nothing there. Uh, another tricky thing is when we try and apply a blend mode of say that picture sitting on the stage if there's nothing underneath that picture the blend mode doesn't do anything. It's not, we're not blending against anything. We cannot blend against the background of the stage. So we've made a rectangle that is the stage width and the stage height given it the frame color and we can blend mode against that. And there's a little message for the blend mode to work on the body. That's caught me a couple times in the past as we try and apply blend modes. It's like, why aren't the blend modes working? Ah. It's fine if you have several things on the stage and they're on top of one another and you apply a blend mode, that's great. So anyway, you might get caught by that too. You have to put a shape on to the back. You've got to put something on the stage to blend mode against it. Okay, so here's the top strip here, and we are adding some polish. So anytime we see this word polish, that means it's a little bit extra. And we've dot linear gradient on that to get the linear gradient. Uh, it's going right from the edge of gray to right to the edge of darker. And if we change that to green or something like that, then we can see what that looks like. Refresh in here. There's the one color and here's the green. And note that we're going down from the top. That is because we start at a point of zero, zero and we go to a point of zero in the X and 60 down. If we put stage width here, stage width and zero there, then the blend mode would go across from here to here and that would look like this. So now we've got the darker uh, here and going across to a green like that. Also looks kind of nice. All right, but this this could be any line on an angle of any sort as well. Um, so that's something to think about. And also you don't need it, uh, yeah, let's redo that. If we didn't want it to, uh, say we wanted the first half of it to be gray, we could go 0.5 here. So now it's gonna be full gray up to 0.5 of this line. And then from 0.5 to one of this line, it will it will blend from gray to green. So that would look like this, which may possibly look nicer because you see as this goes across, we're losing the gray here. I would probably start at a darker color than the gray maybe, and then um, comes into the green. So here now we don't lose the gray. It goes to 0.5 and then it starts to blend. That's probably cropped a little close to that. If you're going to do that, you might, well, who knows? I don't, know. I don't think I'd do that. But that's just a little bit about gradients. Sometimes uh, I've often found that gradients are tricky for people. They were tricky for me for a long time. I'd look at these and go, ah. All right, so hopefully that helps that demonstration. As we move on down, this is polished because we don't even need to have this body here. If we go like that, here's what it could look like. Uh, many people would be happy just putting the logo up there. But anytime you have a logo, sometimes it's nice to have just a little icon or something like that next to it, some, some visual fun. <laughs> so we put in, we did a little search and got some bodies on there. Now just watch it when you do your search. One is, I mean, there's lots of stuff out there on the internet that says, hey, it's free, go ahead, and that's fine. Uh, 
um, there's shutter uh, shutter stock or stock <laughs> what did I say shutter stock uh, that's certainly one of them. Uh, stock footage that sometimes has watermarks on it or you could buy things you're, you're always welcome to support artists and systems like that of course if you're going professional and working for a company and you've got that money go ahead um, Otherwise, if you are just grabbing something, it's good if you can try and if it's you know something special that somebody's made, it's good that you can give credit to that. <laughs> we haven't given credit. I actually only can use this exercise device or exercise app really locally. I, I just built it because I wanted wanted it, um, and possibly for educational purposes. We'll call this video educational purposes. Um, so. Uh, plus, I'm not even sure if there was anybody who owned up to making that that uh, little graphic there. But uh, the other thing I was going to say is if you are going to do something, and, and don't always pick from the first page of Google. So don't, if you're going to pick some bodies or some, some you know, weird picture of pomegranate, don't pick the first pomegranate that you see because that's probably more popular or more popularly seen. You might want to drop back to a couple Google searches down and uh, pick something from there. Maybe it you know, could be perceived as more unique, perhaps. <laughs> Alrighty, so uh, we have a new label in there and there's the word flexercise. This itself was polished. Let's put that right there because it used to be exercise. So if you're making an app and you call it exercise you know hey <laughs> it's not very it's not really a trademark i don't think you could call your app exercise nobody would be able to recognize it exercise is the general term we use for all exercise uh in this in this hipster time you know where stores are called store and <laughs> weird things like that um you know uh, uh, so be it but I, I still don't think I would get away with calling this app exercise. Nobody would think it's even an app title. It's more like an instruction. So add something unique to it. And it didn't take much to call this thing Flexercise instead, which is sort of fun because um, we have flexible times here and we're flexing and it sort of rhymes with exercise. So that's what you're looking for, something a bit unique like that. If you really want to see if it's unique, then put that into Google, see how many other, make sure there's no other app that is called Flexercise if you're wanting to launch this. And, you know, see how unique that is. The font is squared. Now, this is pretty easy. Okay, there's a font of squared right here. We say in the assets, font is called squared. Here's the source to it. It doesn't, this name does not have to match up to the name that is inside there. Like uh, Flash used to have to do is always a pain in the neck. This is just, hey, you can't quite get simpler than that. Here, here's the name of the font. There's the source. Just add it into your assets and then you can use it. So down here in the label, font is squared. Yay. <laughs> and it works. <laughs> woot, woot. <laughs> So that custom font you would have to upload to your website as well for you to see that. Um, you can also pass in a, a Google font. Just watch it. Uh, watch it with Google fonts. There's not so many of Google fonts that you know people who are using it. It's nice, easy system to use. It's starting to hey, it's almost like our now now like making a logo out of your system font stuff. You know, like a oh here's my logo and it's done in Comic Sans or in Courier. Um, so you might want to be careful with Google fonts when you're making a logo there. Uh, it's still probably best to go out and try and support, find some custom fonts. Font options allow you to do that CSS type stuff. You could make it italic in here. You say comma italic as well, and that would italic it. Uh, so we've place that and now we have some more polish for data so I don't know if you noticed but when we refresh here if I refresh it's still keeping those same numbers if I say change this to 60 and I hit refresh it still stays at 60 so that's using local storage local storage yokel yokel storage local storage is really easy to use we're just testing to see if it's around and then we say, hey, do we already have something stored in exercise? 
And if we do, we need to json.parse that. So we're storing an array, something like that, in there. You can store any uh, object literal that holds things like numbers, strings, or arrays, or other object literals, or arrays that hold object literals, et cetera. So it's object literals, arrays, strings, and numbers. It's not things like a date object or a button object. Um, if you want to do that, you can look at, at Zimon. Zimon is uh, Zim's version of JSON that actually can store things like a, a date and a button. Really cool. Anyway, we JSON that when we save it, you'll see the saving later. It's always a bit of a chicken before the egg or an egg before the chicken or whichever thing here uh, when you're working with local storage. We come in. We have to check to see if we've got something already, and if we don't, then we can set something, and then later on we would just save something. We're now moving on to the list. Everybody okay? Hey there. <laughs> Good to have you here. Uh, hopefully we're not rambling too much. Oh, this is a ramble. Oh my goodness. How can I ramble about rambling? Oh no, now I'm rambling about rambling about rambling. I love that. It goes into a feedback forever, or so it says in my sketchbooks. All right, so we've got a style here on the labels of the slider and, or a label, sorry, and then we've got a slider as well, expand of zero on the slider. I'm not sure. Oh, the sliders automatically come with it. They were, they were made, these things were made to be small. So if I refresh here, these guys uh, were made to sort of pop up in a corner and have a whole bunch of them in here and, and a little pull down type thing. Uh, I've made them bigger now and so they don't need these are so big that I don't need and, and it had on an automatic expand of, expand of 20 and it was like too too much I would click here and it would start dragging the thing and so anyway we reduced the expand on that uh, with the style that's neat so that's a property that's available via style you could also use a dot expand round brackets and we're setting the size of the label as well. Those are so custom, those little things, that there was actually no, um, there was no way with parameters that we could make this small. You see how that's kind of small compared to this? If all of this were reduced to be really small, this would be really, really small. But we wanted to be able to fit more text in here. And since this is so big, we don't need the text to be this big next to it. So we had to dig in and actually style the text of this because there's no parameters as you're making the list. There's no parameters on, on how to affect the label. So sometimes that works in Zim. If you've, if you've got something you don't see any way to change it, you may be able to apply styles to go into the parts of it. See, this is a label which is part of all of this uh, single line, another line, another line. So that's a label in it. And hey, even, even though Zim makes that for you, it's still a label being made, and therefore a style can be applied to it. All right. Here's the list itself. Here are these things that we're talking about. So the, the list elements are these list.sliders. That's a static method called right on the list with the capital L. And here's our stuff, and nowhere in here is there anything about a font size. This is setting the beginning of the slider, the end of the slider. Uh, we're passing the starting data in. So this is our data at zero. That's for the leg kicks. How long do we want to do the leg kicks? Here's our data for the squats, etc. So that's the data that's coming from the local storage. Or that was set to 20 or 60, 60, 60, 60, etc. at the beginning. All these things, uh, just time. So this is a function that calls whenever we move the slider. The function, I can't remember what these are, something to do with paddings on, on stuff, but uh, anyway, we'll leave that. We're scaling that a little bit bigger than a normal list and positioning it using our nice new, oh, I'm really liking these. This just makes it so much easier to understand what's going on rather than the trues and falses and nulls and stuff. It's uh, nice and easy, 50-50 from the left and the bottom. There we go. When we change it, we could get the list text. We could jump to certain sections. I didn't make, you know, that might be if, if, if you're exercising, perhaps I just want to go to here. So maybe if I pressed here, it would just jump to that place and the time would change. Uh, maybe for the future, could do that. 
It could also be dangerous, though. <laughs> You're trying to exercise. It's like, no, 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 I don't want to do that part. <laughs> you know, but if, so if you have a nice, easy way to change it. Uh, the idea, by the way, is I'm exercising in the other room with my headphones on. It's not like I'm watching this go as, uh, you know, as I'm exercising. So some of the visual aspects of this, I don't know if they were necessary to do, because like I said, we're not watching. We're not sitting there watching. Or probably not. All right, so local time. Now we're getting in, I guess, or total time, sorry. We're getting into the programming behind this. And I don't really want to spend time on the actual programming, like uh, uh, the logic, the coding, all that kind of stuff. I, I'm just wanting to show you now in this explore more of the uh, finishing features that we could use with Zim. So you'll have to go in here and see how how we loop through these things and add up all the times. It was actually harder than expected. There was one weird part, whereas if you go and change the time before where you are, it affects it a certain way. But if you change the time after where you are, it affects it in a different way. And it's, you know, because one, the time's already gone by, so the time left doesn't change. The other one, you just changed the time left. And it did take some head scratching to go through this. Here's where we're doing the local storage. So if we've got local storage and we've made, uh, every time we go to get a new total, this is get total, if you recall, I think is the one that's run from, oh no, it's not. I was gonna say it's here, but that's adjust time. But I think adjust time then calls get totals. So get totals is called from a different number of different places. And anytime we wanna get a total, it means we probably changed it, changed something. So we're running the local storage right in here we JSON stringify our new data, our new totals. So I guess D is the individual totals of each, the stuff that we're wanting to save. So we JSON stringify that array, and anytime we make a change, it then um, saves it immediately to the local storage. That means if we make a change and exit and come back, that change would have been received. Uh, possibly you could do something like a save button, but then it would only save to local storage. When you press the save button, you might lose some information. Alrighty, body progress. So this whole body issue, the whole body, you know, the filling up of the body or the training of the body, <laughs> that doesn't sound good, uh, was an extra thing as well. Uh, you know, some polish on there. If we were really sitting by this watching it an overall progress bar isn't the best thing to have it would probably be better if each of these bars it's a bit tricky though uh, if there was some progress available in here a little a little thing that filled up maybe these bars could empty like this hey that one's done hey this one's done hey this one's done and you could see that uh, the reason why i said it's tricky is you, you probably want to do a progress bar like this well then you're using it for two things. You're using it to set the time and a progress bar, and it becomes a little bit confusing because those are two different things in the same space. So that's risky. Anyway, like I said, we're not really here wanting to find out where we are. As a solution to that, we kind of, we, we did this. So watch when we hit the start like that. The kicks of so This one went pink. Circles. Note how that happens. Look at the next one. Oh, sorry. Well, let's wait 105 seconds until the next one comes. Okay, so that's not going to cut it. Uh, we can Squat. There. Squat. Did you see what happens? Legend it goes pink and it fades to pink. Dancing. Yeah. Chow, cha, cha. Psychedelic dancing. Oh, stretches and. Okay, so it fades to pink. And then, then, and then when it's done, it fades to green and the next one fades to pink. So that's a color fade. Um, it's quite nice. So I can easily tell where I am right now if I happen to glance at this. Oh, I'm in floor stretches, okay? I, don't, I mean, maybe we could have done a progress bar as to how much time was left in floor stretches, but whatever. <laughs> right now he's wearing his shorts. So we've got an overall time progress, but we didn't do individual time progresses, uh, but we did sort of show which step you're on. Now, initially we had this just be a red thing that went by, but then we thought, hey, it'd be neat to turn these to a slightly different color so it'd get a get a stronger indication that we've we've done these. Well, yeah, initially we had just these colors. These colors were changing. 
and I didn't do those. And then I said, I, I can, maybe I can't even see those colors very well. There's only one pink thing in here. And I said, okay, well, let's change the color of the bar. So we did a bit of extra visual polish to make sure that that got, uh, that got seen. The body, the body, the body's progress, progress, the body's progress is uh, done through a proportion. This is in proportion. And uh, we want to start at zero to a get total. So these are inputs. Uh, there's zero done or up to get total done. And then we're going from the body's Y, which is down here. Uh, to the body's Y plus the body's height. Now, how does that work? Oh, yes, the body's Y, sorry, is not down there. The body's Y is up top. Body's Y plus the body's height is down here. But that's going the wrong way, depending on which way you want the, the, the progress to move. So we've, um, we've flipped that. And so that's the sort of a direction. If you go negative one, it, and it, um, what's the word for it? Whatever that <laughs> parameter is called in there, you can go look it up under proportion. It's like uh, direct. It's not direction. I can't remember. It's invert or something like that. Uh, normally, as as the values are going up, the progress goes up. Here, we're, we've switched the direction of it, I think. And so as the, the, the values go up, we're actually going in reverse. Or as Oh, we're counting down. So as the values go down, we've got something going up, that, that kind of deal. We're moving a blind. So the blind, this is just the proportion setup. Uh, we have this blind, and it's the same size as the body with a frame color equal. So basically what we've got are two bodies. Here's a body and we have a body two, which is a clone of body one. So anytime you need a second copy of something, you just clone it. And we've set the blend mode there of multiply, I think on both of them. Blend mode on multiply and brought the alpha down on them. So basically what's happening is when we put the blind in there, we can only see this body. And what we're going to do is animate the scale or the position. I think it's the position of this uh, blind so that as it moves we reveal the earlier body body now we could have done that with a mask uh, but anytime you can avoid using a mask it's probably better masking takes a little bit of processing power it's also sometimes confusing and animating masks mask and stuff put a little bit of strain on things uh, we have to do that in behind we have to constantly be remaking the mask that's what we're doing when when we dynamically place a mask. So if we can avoid a mask, it's usually better. And we did this with a blind. Here's the timer. So it is the timer that uh, we use the timer to actually animate that. Uh, as the timer ticks down, we're using the timer for a number of things to figure out where we are in the sound and the music. Um, so the timer, in a sense, is like a big, well, I don't know, a big slider or something like that. It's or a dial. It's it's the thing that's going down. We could have done all of this with a slider and a dial, and um, but obviously, uh, well, why do that? Because we're not sitting there wanting to slide up and down. <laughs> so we use a timer for it. <laughs> there we go. Uh, the timer has been positioned. We, by the way, the timer also has colon in there. So I don't know if you noticed as it's clicking down, you see the 0 0.13. Uh, if you don't have the colon, then you're, it's a, I think it's a little harder to understand what's going on. So 40 and we hit start. Well, in this case, so that kicks uh, it might be easy because we're not past one. So this is just saying you've got 40 seconds left, but it, it, obviously I'm not going to be exercising only for five seconds on each of these. So as soon as you get over a minute, worth it starts it starts becoming hard oh i've got you know um 112 minutes left or what is that or is it seconds anyway <laughs> i can't remember so it, it's nice to go with the colon here a little bit of polish okay so adjusting the time hmm. not sure what is going on with that oh adjust time maybe that's what uh, was being Call. I'm not sure where adjusting time came in. Oh, uh, yeah, that's when the sliders. Yeah, sliders call adjust time, right? Let's go check that. We they are adjust time. Okay, so the sliders are calling adjust time, and this is what we're doing there. We're getting a new total. We're saying how much time should be on that last the timer, or how much time should be put on the timer. 
there's the if it's bigger than the current sound then we've got to add time on the end otherwise the time has already happened so we don't have to add to the time left and we also need to update the proportion there to the new total time oh that was tricky too timer dot total time object last value uh, we have to find out we have to remember how much time we had before and compare it so the last value that's right so as we do each slider we had to know what it was before so that we know how much time to add to it or <laughs> you know? so anyway that the, that like i said that's all the coding the logic that was that was tricky here's the start button uh, we are using the start and and the toggle there so sorry start pause but we're using the label with a toggle and that makes it quite easy this button is quite easy to use now where we just hit start, um, swing. it says pause, so hit pause, and it says start. So that's the toggle on the button. Uh, there's a bit of polish on the corner. So we've uh, applied a nice sort of motion corner there. Oh, it looks like it's, you know, moving almost. That whoosh, whoosh, I'm stretching, I'm flexing. There we go. And when we play that thing, we're... Uh, setting the pause of the the timer, see how it's done. It's kind of nice. The pause of the timer to play dot toggled. So toggled is either true or false depending on whether it's toggled, and we can directly connect that up. So it's hardly any work to to do things. Also like pause all those sounds. We just say hey, the pause is equal to the play dot toggled. Pause is equal to the play dot toggled. Pause is equal to the play dot toggled. This is true or false, whether it's toggled or not, whether we play the sound or not. We when we play a sound, we record that sound in a, uh, a variable, usually. And this one's called instruction sound, waltz sound, belly sound. And then we can use that to control the sound later, like to set its paused or set its volume or something like that. So anytime you play a sound, you can store the results of that playing. It makes what's called a CreateJS sound instance. And then on that CreateJS sounds instance, we can do, we can control it. So that's what we're doing there time. So whenever the timer steps, so the timer goes down, here we are applying our, our progress. So the blind, that was that uh, gray shape in between the two bodies, we're setting its Y position to our progress, that's our um, um, proportion object, and we convert the current time. So that's how that works. And What's this? If current sound is equal to list.length, oh, if we're at the end, then don't bother stepping. I uh, don't know. All this stuff is more along the lines of that coding stuff I wasn't going to talk about, right? Where we're playing certain sounds, oh, playing the instruction sounds, stopping. Oh, yeah, right. We just put this in. If there's already an instruction sound playing, then I'm going to stop it and remove listeners on it. Uh, how, how we had to manage the pause of the sound because it's using the same sound each time. You should never just say stop a sound or, or replace it with another sound when you already had an event listener on to find out if it, uh, if it, would, if it had finished. Now we had to put an event listener on if we were, if we were finished um, so that uh, uh, why do we do that? Oh yeah, we don't want to leave another sound playing because we couldn't pa we couldn't pause that other sound anymore. If we overwrite it with a new sound, there's no way to pause the previous sound that was playing. So we have to stop the previous sound from playing, then play the current sound, and we want an event on that saying, hey, when we finish the current sound, set the sound object to null. Otherwise, what would happen? Do you know what would happen? <laughs> sort of a logical thing. Imagine this. You would start it. Close. It would be playing a sound any minute now. Oh, darn this. Squat. So we paused it there. Great. When I play Squat. it, that's great. Squat. But, oh, crap. I missed it. But if there's no sound playing, if the sound is already played, and I pause it and start it again, it would end up playing the last sound that was recorded in there. Do you get it? 
so because the pause is going to start the sound again, it would just start it again. I think that's what would happen unless it finishes and I think pausing it might start it from the beginning again. If it's finished and you say pause it equals false, I think what it does is it plays it again. And so maybe it doesn't. Maybe since it's at the end of the sound, it doesn't play it again, in which case we could have avoided all of this stuff anyway, but we sort of thought that maybe it would play it again. Anyway, no big deal there. Just some, you can go in there and see, at least we're showing, showing you how to do some sound manipulation in there, which is nice. And various fades. That was another polish bit where we fade the sound. So when we want to play the waltz sound, which is that boom, 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 we are playing it at a volume of zero to start. And then we animate the waltz sound to a volume of one in some amount of time. That animates its volume up, which is, you know, subtle, but rather than just bang, I'm starting right in there. And same thing we do, uh, we do the same thing when we turn the sound off as well. Now just watch, it is not waltz sound. Most of Zim Animate is using the animate method. So that would be something like waltz sound dot animate its volume property to 700 or circle dot animate its x position to whatever in so much time. So we are usually using the animate method of an object. That works on display objects. A sound is not a display object. This sound, Walt sound, is actually a CreateJS sound instance. And it's CreateJS. CreateJS has no idea what Zim Animate can do. Uh, <laughs> so anyway, what we're doing is using the animate function. So this is the Zim Animate function, at which point we have to put the object that we're animating right in here, Walt's sound like that, comma, and then the property that we want to change, and then that. So that's no problem. Animate, Zim Animate can animate any object's properties, including um, HTML object's properties. So you can animate the, the left of a div, for instance. Uh, CreateJS can do that, and Cre uh, Zim uses CreateJS this animate in behind. I mean, there's a ton of stuff that Zim adds to CreateJS's animate, but um, in the end, it does flow through to uh, create just as animate, which is basically just animating any properties object. Uh, that's it's been done for a long time. That's what uh, Tween JS and Greensock and you know, all these all these other uh, ones uh, Flash has done. They're just taking an object and applying a formula to uh, provide an in with applying a formula to an input and getting an output. Alrighty, so uh, that's what we're doing there. And we're nearly done. Hopefully you're good. Uh, if if it's hit the next, if it's hit floor stretches, so here we're asking for the item's text property. If it's now floor stretches that we're on, then animate the waltz sound back out. So we're animating the waltz sound to zero, and we're then making sure that that's stopped and setting the waltz sound to null. So that if we play it again later, like if we come back and uh, play it again later, uh, everything kind of is starting from zero again. The sound gets remade and the sound doesn't get remade over top of the sound that already existed. That sound that already existed had an event on it, which means we're running multiple events. And so you've got to watch that. You never want to overwrite an object that has an event on it without first clearing the event. Alrighty, uh, item label dot animate. Here's the animates to the colors. Now this is really cool. Item dot label. This is what it was. Item dot label dot color equals pink, like that. Semicolon. That's what it was. And what we converted into is item dot label. I can do it. <laughs> I've typed in a while, I guess. Item dot label dot animate color to pink. So look, it's only just a few more characters, and we're just instead of changing it directly to pink, we're animating the label color to pink. Yay, nice, huh? And same with the slider bar. Uh, do, do, do. We have an emitter. The emitter on the end was pretty cool. Do you remember the emitter on the end? Goes brrrr, and these rings go up the person. So we made a circle to make it a ring. You can just set the 
it'll, middle of the circle to clear and then blue on the outside. We've scaled that circle down. We squashed it in the Y. So remember dot ska works. You can say scale the thing 0.2 and then it scales both the X and the Y 0.2. Or you can say, hey, scale the X to this and the Y to that. Our emitter, we're making it go up with a gravity of uh, minus two. We're not shrinking the emitter. We're saying that the angle is pointing up as well. Otherwise, the, what happens is the emitter has a force, a default force. You could turn the force to zero, then the gravity up would be fine. It would just go up. But if you have a force, it pushes outwards everywhere, or it pushes outwards at the angle, in this case, of minus 90. Zero is positive going along the x-axis. Minus 90 is going up, basically. And you can set a range there with the Zim V value. You could say something like minus 100. Oh, sorry. Min, here's that typing again. Min minus 100, comma, max, colon, uh, minus 80, like that. And so now those rings going up wouldn't always just go straight up. They would go kind of between minus 100 and minus 80. So min max, you could pass in an array of random numbers and get random specific angles. But hey, that's that'd probably be rather unusual, maybe not. My goodness, I typed a lot there. We've slowed down the interval of the emitter. Note that emitters usually are really fast, but they don't have to be. You can emit at uh, an interval and you can put in a min max range there or at certain, certain things with uh, uh, square brackets to get certain specific interval times. Uh, here we've done extra animation. So anything that we don't provide for animation, things like shrinking and the angle, and I don't know if the angle is animating. But anyway, this is animation of the particle. And so what we're doing is animating the registration point of the particle, but we're waiting 300 milliseconds and then animating it. And let's uh, watch what happens. That starts paused, by the way. We've located this at the, the timer down there and moved it over, put it in behind. We might have needed an or two. Let's try that in or two. Uh, or moves things via layer. It's the order that you see them. So uh, if you or plus one, uh, one, it will come up a layer. If you or minus two, it's going down two layers. There's also top, which is at the very top, and bot, which is at the very bottom. So that's how you can change stacking levels. Also, when you locate it too, you can go loc on timer, uh, that is either loc at an object with an X and Y, or you would locate at certain y, X comma Y. So we'd have to null this right now. And then you would say where, which container. So if this is a stage, and then you could say at zero, that would be put it at the bottom layer of the stage. So anytime there's loc or center reg or center, you've always got a parameter after the container that says what layer on the container you want. But I often find it easier to uh, just use either or, top or bottom. That usually gets you around just fine. All right, so let's have a look at that. That's what we were wanting to see. We refresh here. We'll reduce uh, reduce this down. Well, actually, we can even bring these down to zeros and get there faster. So we'll just keep that last one in. Back stretches. Here it goes. Ready? Ground dancing. Ground dancing. Yeah. So there, there it is. It um, it starts going up, and then it slants over to the right, up, and slants over to the right. Neat. Uh, when that timer is complete, so this is when the timer is all done. We have a complete sound, and that's when we emitter dot spurt. So we uh, we start paused, and then we spurt eighteen of these rings. Half they go. We're also animating all of the labels back to the right color. So any uh, labels are going to the right color. Hello, Spanish, please. Oh dear, somebody wants Spanish on, uh, on um, the Zim videos. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, okay, blind.animate, where that's, oh, uh, I don't know if you noticed, but the body, so the body starts off with this color, and as this thing ends, let's just, Bring this uh, up to five and five here and start. Okay, so that is coming down. It gets dark, fills in based on this. Ground dancing. Yeah, ground dancing. So look, you 
see that? The blind gets animated up along with the rings and then leaves us back ready to start again. Woohoo! Now restarting is always a pain. You just got to go through and uh, reset all the various total times. And we paused pause timers and toggle plays. So, so we don't want to be able to be pressing those buttons as it's restarting. So we've done various things with it uh, there to stop that from happening. We've animated, oh, we're animating back the colors. I'm not sure what that other color animation was then. Anyway, that's us looping through all the colors, animating back, setting various current sounds and start checks and all that kind of stuff and restart. That's what restart ends up looking like. You can do the poor man's restart and just refresh the page or zigo you know, the current page index.html or something, and then the whole thing would start again because you refresh the page. That can affect your stats, <laughs> maybe in a good way. <laughs> hey, look how many people have seen this page <laughs> because they might be refreshing it. Um, but anyway, uh, that's the poor man's restart. I would go in and spend, it usually takes about 20 minutes or so to figure out where you have to turn everything back off and on. There's usually some glitches in there and then finally you figure it out and all this stuff happens. There's the tool tip. So we have the Zim tip and we say basically where, what target this is on. This is the timer. Uh, that's what it's going to say, where we want to position it. So that sort of sets the positioning of the tip. And then when we mouse over the tip, we're going to tip.show. So you need to say how to show that tip. If you're clicking on something or rolling over something or whatever, then you can uh, tip.show. The tip itself will take care, uh, it will disappear after a certain amount of time. Target. I think it just by default, it you know, allows you enough time to read it probably and then uh, removes itself. You can change that if you want. And yay, we're down to our final stage dot update. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. So that's the final bit there, nothing else. And this has been then. Uh, a look through flexor size, a little app with some polish tips. Hopefully that's okay. And now I'm going to actually use this to go exercise. Uh, neat, huh? And this has been a Zim Explore. I am Dr. Abstract, and it was great to have you here. It was nice to do an Explore. We've been doing a lot of bubblings and oh, a huge series on Learn JavaScript. That was 30 episodes, so it's been some time since we've gotten to a few of our other series here, like the Zoom Explorer. If you are still here, uh, that's great. Thanks for, for listening. I hope you come into zimjs.com slash Slack. Check us out. Please let others know. Make an app. And uh, hey, on Slack, you're welcome to, uh, in the examples, you're welcome to post what you've made. We'd love to see it. All the best. Ciao.